Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers, and in this video, I am going to teach you how to determine when and if you need to add inline fuses when designing a camper solar array. Now this video is episode number 13 in a series of videos where I teach you all of the basic electrical skills and concepts that you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now two quick things before we get started. Number one, I'm going to go through this stuff pretty quickly. If you need some time to digest these concepts, I have made a blog post with all of the information and graphics you'll see in this video so you can learn at your own pace. Number two, there's a bit of prerequisite information that you need to know. Specifically, you need to know how to determine the short circuit amperage of the, your entire solar array. Now, if you don't already know how to do that, there is a link for a video that will teach you how to do that in the video description below. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get to it. The National Electric Code is pretty straightforward on this issue. In NEC 690.9, paraphrased, it says, Solar arrays having higher current availability than the maximum overcurrent protected device rating specified for the panel shall be protected from overcurrent, except when the short circuit currents from all sources do not exceed the ampacity of the wires and the maximum overcurrent protective device size rating specified on the PV module nameplate. So what does that even mean? This means that if the short circuit current of the entire solar array is greater than the maximum series fuse rating that's on the back of the panel, each parallel connected panel or series string must be fused. So this means that you need two different things to determine if your solar array needs to be fused. First thing, you need to know the short circuit current of your solar array. And the second thing, you need to know the maximum series fuse rating of your solar panel, which can be found on the sticker on the back of your solar panel. So with those two pieces of information, you can follow these following steps to determine if you need to use fuses in your solar array and how to size them. If the short circuit current of the entire array is greater than the maximum series fuse rating listed on the solar panel spec sticker, then fuses must be used in this location. And the fuses must be sized to match the maximum series fuse rating listed on the solar panel spec sticker. Now, if the array short circuit current is less than the maximum series fuse rating listed on the solar panel spec sticker, you do not need fuses. But a dual pole solar disconnect is required per NEC 690.15 part C. And we will talk about that in the next video. So be sure to subscribe. Now, honestly, that could be the end of the video. Those steps will tell you when to fuse versus when not to fuse your solar array. But I'm gonna stretch this video out a little bit so I can get more ad revenue from it. But I'm gonna stretch this video out a bit and explain how and why fusing a solar array is sometimes needed and sometimes it doesn't do anything. So why must you fuse a solar array? Let's look at an example. In the event that your solar array needs to be fused because the array short circuit amperage is greater than the panel maximum series fuse rating, you must fuse your array at the point where the panels or series strings get combined to prevent potential fires or overheating due to a faulty panel. So here's what happens in an unfused array if a short were to happen somewhere inside of one of the panels. Now in the event that panel number three develops an internal short or fault of some kind, panels one and two would seek out the path of least resistance, which is the point of the short, to complete their circuit. This means that there would be 20.4 amps flowing to panel number three, combined with the 10.2 amps from panel three, and there could potentially be 30.6 amps flowing through the short, which is over 15 amps higher than the max amperage rating of the panel, and is more amperage than the panel is designed to handle. This is a safety hazard. Now, what if there were fuses attached to each of the positive wires from each solar panel where they connect to the MC4 combiner, like what would be required by code for this particular array? Now, in the event that panel number three develops an internal short or fault of some kind, panels one and two would seek out the path of least resistance, the point of the short, to complete their circuits. This means that there would be 20.4 amps flowing to panel number three, except that since we installed a 15 amp fuse protecting panel three's circuit, that fuse would blow and isolate the problem panel to a short circuit that is within the maximum short circuit parameters of that panel. So that's why by code fuses are required in this array. Now, why would a solar array not need to be fused? So if the short circuit current of the solar array is less than the maximum series fuse rating of the solar panel, the array does not need to be fused. Fusing this type of array adds no additional protection nor benefit, and here's why. This diagram shows three 200 watt panels wired in series. 
Each solar panel has a short circuit current of 10.2 amps and an operating current of 9.8 amps and a maximum series fuse rating of 15 amps. Now, since the maximum series fuse rating is 15 amps, we know that the wires, diodes, connectors, and other internal components of the actual solar panel can handle a max of 15 amps. If a short circuit or other malfunction were to happen inside of one of the solar panels or on one of the solar panel wires, somewhere on the array, since the short circuit current of the array is 10.2 amps, it's safe to say that the panel itself and the wires used are designed to handle this short circuit event as the short circuit current cannot exceed the maximum fuse series rating of the panel. In other words, the 10.2 amp short circuit current would never trip a 15 amp breaker uh, that would be used in this array. Now, what if you just wanted to add a fuse just to be safe? Like, I guess you can do whatever you like, but ultimately it wouldn't do anything. Um, in the event of a short circuit, 10.2 amps would flow. That's the most amount of power that could flow from this solar panel whenever it's short circuited. Now, under normal operation, whenever the panel is operating totally properly, there's no faults or anything like that, 9.8 amps is flowing. Now, sure, a 10 amp fuse would indeed be between those two values, but the difference of 0.2 amps in either direction would either A, never allow the fuse to blow, or make the fuse constantly experience nuisance blows under normal operating conditions. So this is why, by code, a fuse is not required in this particular scenario. Now, wrapping this up, Faults in solar panels are really quite rare. Um, there are diodes in most solar panels that don't allow most of the above scenarios to really ever happen anyway. Fusing is required for a redundancy in the event that one of the diodes fails or something else goes wrong with the panel or the wires in general. Now, there isn't much to a solar panel. It's pretty much just a bunch of silicon cells fused together between some laminated glass connected to some diodes and wires. Oversimplifying, of course, but that's pretty much how it is. Even if a cell burns out, usually the panel will still work. But since the National Electric Code specifically makes a call on the issue of fusing an array, we should really follow that in our attempt to design and build a high-end camper electrical system. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed it or learned something new, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Hit the like button and leave any questions you've got in the comments section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.